Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about episode 6 of Outer Range. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, first and foremost, let's start off with the whole, um, uh, let's start with our Autumn. Um, obviously, you had the whole scene with... Royal going to find her, and she was out there by the hole, and he's like, right, I'll take you back to your camp and stuff like that, but uh, when he did, he drove right by her, like, oh, that seems weird, I'm like, where is he actually going to take her, like, are you going to take her somewhere and kill her, like, because I was about to say, like, because she's like, are you going to push me in, because he's probably like, no, because stuff I ended up pushing in came back, I came back, Trevor's body came back, so even if I pushed you in there, if I killed you and pushed you in there, it wouldn't be enough, so... But he keeps driving, and she jumps off the back of his quad uh, and ends up getting hurt. And she's like, I want my necklace back. He's like, I can't. I've ground it up, and it was just a rock, which is interesting that he didn't tell her the entire truth. Because, yes, he took it, and he's, cause she's like, I see it on your hands. It wasn't just a rock. There was something more to it. She's like, there's something greater at play here that we're all connected to. That, that pit, it's connected to time. We know it. We know this, Royal. But what was annoying him is because... I think what frustrated him, because I wasn't quite sure about like why he was so mad, was it just like, right, seeing the end result of, I'm still dead, even and I was told I died, and the fact is, you were there, and you're yellow, so that just kind of rubs in the wrong way, but I think what frustrated him the most, he was hoping to time travel with it, but it's like, no, like it, it time traveled him somewhat, but it wasn't the full experience like the the uh, hole, and I think maybe he was also hoping that with the rock, he'd be able to control where he could go, like he'd have a little bit more control, but he didn't, he ended up somewhere, he ended up at the moment of his death, and then also it's like, cool, and it's kind of a one-shot deal, because it kind of goes away, so, but the fact is, he didn't want to give Autumn any satisfaction of knowing, because I'm sure he doesn't want her to go back on his property, trying to find another one, and you know, it's like, right, I can't, I don't want you mix up in this, stay away from my family, because she's like, why won't you tell your family what's going on, he's like, because they wouldn't understand, I think for him, it's like, once again, why he feels the need to try and keep this from him, because he's like, oh, they think I'm crazy, it's like, well, then just take them to the hole, but I think, I think what it comes down to is like, we know he has some deeper connection to it, and Autumn has some connection as well, um, but Royal's situation is like, there's something inside of him that's, I think, preventing him from bringing it up because maybe it, it, it connects to his past. It's stuff that he hasn't really talked about. And so he leaves Autumn behind. He's like, leave, stay here. You come near my family again. I will kill you. And leaves her. And she's like, Royal, um, I'm just trying to help people. And that's what I'm trying to understand. Like, I guess because she think maybe this has something correlation to do with the cult she was a part of. Maybe she still is a part of it. And it's like, oh yeah, what's like, what's the, um, what's yellow mean to you so he's like because he even asked like in episode two like are you a part of a cult and she said i think she said she was i don't know if she ex explicitly said that she still was uh so like maybe she's here on their orders and that's what this is all about but because she does call someone later on and she's like i need money and i don't know if that was because she had like her her money set up in like a, a trust fund isn't it but i think it's like right whatever cult she's associated with is who she's there on their behalf maybe but um she ended up uh, going to town, trying to, uh, well, before she even found out what Royal did, what did she do? She went to Billy, which the Tillersons are going through their own thing right now, but let's, let's focus on this first and then we'll circle back to it. But she went to Billy and found him in the woods and she's like, right, I'm going to show you this. And she told the story about that was an astrological, um, astrologer, I couldn't find the word, who kept looking always up to the heavens, but never like, and would stumble every time they walked in. It was like, oh, their mom told him like, how can you see what's in the heavens if you can't even see what's below your own feet? Um, so I guess it's almost like a right, like how can you ever truly appreciate what you find up in the heavens and what you can see the beauty there and everything? Like how can you ever fully, truly understand that when there's so much wonder and beauty and things here on the ground that you're not even willing to acknowledge? How can I, I think there's a, I can't put it in words. I think it is a, a saying that just in general, if you're turning your blind eye to, uh, turning a blind eye to the what's beneath your feet, then um, how can you ever hope to really understand what's in the sky? I, I, I don't, that's my understanding. I feel like there's there's a, more to it, I but I just can't really put it into words of what I'm kind of 
got the feeling I got from that. And her showing off the hole to uh, Billy. Billy even going to his dad like, oh, I see it. I know why you want the West Pasture so much. And he takes the rock out of his dad's hand. So he probably knows there's some correlation there. But he doesn't know the ins and outs. Just like um, neither does... Uh, Autumn, which later on we see her picking up her medication um, because she found her tent burned down. All her stuff is gone. So whatever research she probably had about all of this, all her notes, all her medication. But the medication they have at the pharmacy isn't her typical one. They're giving her like the generic version. And once again, ever since Royal took her necklace in episode four, she's been a little erratic. This is the most erratic she's been, but that's probably because she's not on her medicine. Like maybe she hadn't taken it yet. Uh, or whatever, it's just maybe just the circumstances of heightened her mating, because it almost seems manic, the way she's acting this episode, and once again, she always presented herself as almost like so cool, calm, and so in control, and now she's spiraling a bit, now, which I kept noting last episode, um, interestingly enough, she goes off and meets up with Perry, and she's sitting down with Perry, and it's like, oh, your dad, he, like, he scared me, because uh, I can't remember, it was actually last episode, I think, I, I actually didn't talk about it. Perry was actually kind of scared about, like, you know, it's like, right, whatever's in dad is in me too. And this episode really personifies that as well. But he's like, whatever came, whatever came inside of me, like, whatever demon I, like, darkness I have. Um, I had to pause there because I had a, a innuendo that just, I was like, oh, the, <laughs> phrasing. Um, but the darkness inside of him, it's like, yeah, I kind of got that from dad, like, whatever dad's circumstances are. And, you know, Autumn is trying to explain to him, it's like, no, like, you are special, and it's like, right, your dad, we need to report him to the cops, so part of me wondering is like, was Autumn going to cause, was she doing that on purpose, did she go to Perry specifically, or did, she might just, she knows that, um, she knows that Royal disposed of Trevor's body, so she's just assuming, I guess she just assumed the entire time that he killed Trevor, and not that he's protecting his sons, um, but Perry hearing that being like, oh, shit, shit, sh all right, like, right, we're going to do this, it's going to be, she's like, okay, good, it's like, I knew coming to see you was the right thing, Perry, she's like, this is a new beginning, something's happening, like, this, there's something that's unexplainable, there, but it's connected to your family, it's connected to you, it's connected to me, we'll figure out, this is going to be a new beginning, and she's so excited, and... Perry decides to make a decision of his own. So I was like, okay, so what are you going to do, Perry? Are you going to tell your family or not? And he goes to the sheriff's station. I'm like, is he going to confess? We find out later on he did. He wrote a note and confessed, which that leads to a whole lane of issues. Uh, I'm, I'm jumping around a lot, but the fact is, um, I mean, the, the family, once again, it's going through everything because Rhett's got his own thing going on. Cecilia's got her own thing going on. Uh, Royal's trying to be there for Cecilia and try to be there for the family, but he's struggling on that front. They also have Amy asking a whole bunch of questions to her dad because she's like, so I think seeing Trevor's body is one thing, but she feels like the entire family's not telling each other something. And Perry tried to justify but being like, right, sometimes uh, family members, family keeps stuff from people just because they don't want them to get hurt. And then his daughter says a very painful thing to him. Not knowing hurts too, so and maybe she'll it, the way the episode ends. You go, she probably regrets knowing something now, but she still kept in the dark about everything because you're too young to know about this. But Perry made his confession, which Rhett's like, "You were stupid. You shouldn't have done that." Because now the sheriff know now Joy knows that you and I are connected. So if you confess to the murder, that means that I had to have known something about it, but. Perry's like, no, I confessed for everything. And it's like, Royal's pissed at him. Cecilia's pissed at him. He's like, he couldn't live with the guilt of what he had done. To be fair, Joy already knew that he did it. She already had her gut feeling about it, um, which we'll, we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but I guess at the end of the day, she didn't have any actual... Well, she had some proof and some testimony that would have proved that it was Perry. So she would have come towards him anyway. She already had her eyes set on him anyway. So it kind of works out in the end, but it's still a thing. Like, right, the rest of the family gets implicated. And then Rhett in his anger says, like, right, uh, no wonder Rebecca left you. Um, and now Amy has to grow up without a mom because of you. And Perry having that, you know, just what, what happened with Trevor, it set him off. And he attacks um, 
red. He's even got the knife and he's pointing it at his stomach. He's like, you want to stick at him? Go ahead, brother. Like, go ahead and stab me. He's like, yeah, you would be better off dead and something like that. Make it easier for everyone. And he's like, I did it for dad. And it's like, what? Autumn, she was going to tell uh, the sheriff and just Royal was like, why did you go? I told you to stay away from that woman. You didn't listen. And he slams, uh, Royal, uh, he, Royal slams Perry against the wall. And I think some of the glass from the all of that ended up shooting and ended up like cutting Amy in her face. And once again, Royal just showing that Royal, like the, like Perry had said last episode, what was inside of him is just, it came from his dad. And that darkness, that like all of it's because the entire family's just ready to implode from everything. Because really quickly, uh, Rhett, the whole Maria thing, it's like, right, she left after they did her thing, and he goes to talk to her, and you know, she want, doesn't want to stay here anymore. She came back home because of you know circumstances, but she doesn't want to spend the rest of her life here, which Rhett's like, oh, I want to go. She's like, you said you wanted to leave here when you were 17, but no matter what, you're always going to be drawn back by your family. He's like, no, no, no. After the rodeo, I'm a, we can leave. We can. But she's like, you're always going to be drawn back by your family. It's like, it was Perry, wasn't it? And he was like, and she's like, and you helped him. And he was like, no, Perry had nothing to do with it, and neither did I, and Maria. It's like, if you're going to lie about something like this, then we can't be together. Which I'm almost like, well, what do you expect him to do? Tell you the truth? Like, yes, my brother killed Trevor, and I decided to help him because he's my brother. You know, but I guess for her, it's like, I'd rather be more. But I guess it's like, right, if you can do something like that, and if you can lie to yourself about that, then what else could you lie about? Like, what we, we can never, ever be truly open and honest, because she's like, I feels so good when we're together, but this will always be something there. So for Rhett, it's like, here, that's why he was also pissed at. It's like, right, everything you do, uh, Perry, no matter how much you try, you just screw things up for me more and more. My life got turned upside down because I made this stupid decision to help you, and now I regret it. I can't even be with a woman I've loved forever because of you, because it's always going to be an issue, because I'll, I'll always be drawn back to try and protect this family, putting this family's... Um... Uh, uh, happiness and best interest before my own so there's that Cecilia still struggling with everything once again as the most religious person in the family even at church when it came to the whole like all oh, the cracker and the blood uh, the wine she couldn't do it because it was just like no 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 I can't I can't I can't it's just too much even to the point I didn't even talk about it last episode but the bear that she um the bear that she found that she was going to bury, but she kept it. And then the whole thing of like biting its hand, its mouth down on her hand to hurt herself. I guess like she was like filled to the brim and just like she was re once again ready to explode. So I think she needed something to alleviate the pressure. So I think she was, you know, I guess it was kind of the equivalency of like someone cutting themselves, I think. Uh, and Royal tries to talk to her. And he kind of talks about like how stubborn he is and like, right, there was a trip we were, we were taking. I was so certain I knew the more scenic route, but we ended up getting lost, so lost. And you, you, I was too stubborn to ask for direction, but you, you guided us in the right direction, just like you always do. And he's like, I'm so lost without you because this is him trying to open up to her without, because he's kept her at such a distance and he can feel that he feels that things are off and he's trying to like fill that gap, but he's still not telling her everything. He's still keeping her in the dark and you've kind of, his, his choices have led them into this situation the way like things have, like if he had maybe made her more a part of this, maybe Maybe she wouldn't be feeling that way. She'd still be feeling guilt about it. I don't know. So, there's that. Uh, with the whole uh, Autumn thing really quickly, I didn't talk about her encounter with that bear. That encounter with that bear is what really set everything in motion. Because the bear attack was nearby, and what did she do? I'm assuming that's Mama Bear uh, to the cub that uh, Cecilia found. But... She got into like a, a a small like almost like fetal position, which I can never remember. Is it that? Because I thought sometimes like the whole point is to be bigger. You're supposed to be bigger than the bear. That's how you get them to not mess with you. Or is it just to be small? Because I think maybe it depends on what bear it is, or maybe getting small. I feel like I've heard both, but maybe it's different animals I'm hearing about, or maybe it's different types of bears. One you have to make yourself big, and one you have to like make yourself fetal, or maybe one's for another animal. I don't know. But the bear was on top of her, and she's hearing the voice over. Yeah, show him. 
show him. I thought she, it was referencing Royal, but it was like, no, like, if I'm not going to get Royal's help, if I'm not going to have the F Abbott family's help with this, she's like, screw it, then I won't go to them. I'll go to the people who are trying to buy the land, who are who are just as invested in this. So it's like, right, show Billy, because if I get work with Billy, then I can make everything happen that I want, that, you know, how she... I think it is almost like they cult like thing of yeah I'm gonna help everyone, you know. Um, what she's getting out of it is she gonna she's hoping that this this discovery of like things are bigger than what they are that there there's something larger out there that you play a role in maybe that feels some void inside of herself about her you know circumstances that like maybe some family complicated stuff that she's um, she's trying to fill that void of, and like I said ended up taking. Billy there, and she's even talking with Billy later on. He's like, "What is that hole? Is it death?" And she's like, "No, it's time." All like almost all of time, and she's like, "Right, uh, you know, everything is." She's saying like everything's moving in the direction, and it's coming towards me. So, once again, Royals attempts to maybe try and change things because he doesn't have the full picture. Maybe it's just leading things to play out the way that they ultimately end up playing it makes you go is it all inevitable or is it more so a situation of he just hasn't found the right things to do yet to change things i, I don't know it, it just it, right now it almost feels like we're heading to that potential inevitable future but we'll we'll see so i brought it up earlier with the whole joy situation Joy ends up going to, I want to say he's a prosecutor or a judge or somebody who's also up for re-election. And Joy brings it up. It's like, right, the person responsible I th I'm going to bring in is Perry and Rhett for Trevor's murder. Perry and Brett only, um, their alibis are each other and their parents are lying to protect them. So I'm going to get them arrested. It's like, cool, you got everything you need. It's like, well, yes, but the complication is that and I'm also confused about the time frame because I was under the impression, and maybe I maybe that number was thrown out for something else, but I thought the point was, okay, uh, Trevor's uh, body showed up eight days after the last time he was seen, but apparently the way she was talking about it, it was like, oh, his body was found four days after he was seen. So it's like, oh, so it's less time than I thought it was? I thought I thought she said it was like he wasn't seen, but she was saying like, right, uh, his body was found four days after the... Um, but maybe that's to fit the narrative that she had because it's like, right, because four days ago was when it started to rain. No, because she said that's when the body was found, wasn't it? Because her thought was that Perry killed um, Perry killed Trevor. They walked up to that path. It was raining, and when they left the body there, like all the tracks were removed. That's why they couldn't find any traces of anyone bringing the body there. And now she's also thinking like, right, the only inconsistency is the coroner is wrong, and it's like, He's like, what? She's like, yeah, the, the coroner's wrong. And he's like, yeah, I can't take the chance on that. Like something that's going, especially going after the Abbott family, that's not a good thing. So we're, you're, in, you're going in for an election this season, and me too. You, neither one of us should touch this because if you make a move like this, because the Abbots are a big family, and going against them would probably like sour any like a goodwill with the townspeople, especially if you go after Brett, I mean, not Brett. Uh, Rhett and Perry and it doesn't stick she's going to be one egg on her face because it is that little complication of the Perry kill because she is right Perry did kill um, Trevor at the uh, bar but the complication is that little time uh, thing of his body reads corner wise that like, he only died 10 year, ten hours prior, even though he's been gone for days. So it almost implied like, oh, so does that mean they kept him and then killed him? It's like, no, no, he definitely died at the bar, but it's like, the evidence is, in, so it's it wouldn't be a slam dunk because there'd be inconsistencies that uh, a, def, a defense attorney could, e an attorney could easily pull coals on that inconsistency, so... And uh, things for Joy get even more complicated because, well, she brings her wife and her child, uh, their daughter, to church. 
And that was 100% a political move. It's like by going to church, she's trying to win the favor of, you know, by being like, oh, part of the community by going to church. Anyone that might not have sided with her, like election wise, she's trying to get those votes. But the problem is her, her, um, her wife doesn't like appreciate it because it's like, no, 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 I was, I was a prop to you. She's like, do you know how humiliated? Because the moment like, the guy was like, oh, we're going to pray for her family. Um, uh, and the moment I was like, that's going to get weird. And the moment Frank was brought up there, I was like, oh, God, this is going to get awkward. And it super got awkward when it's like, oh, her friend. And you're like, yeah, like, oh, Joy and her friend, Martha. And then you're like, OK, I see how this is. And it's like, right, leaning into it, sticking that knife in a little de de uh, deeper and twisting um, the sanctity and righteousness of a marriage is between a man and woman. You're like, OK. And her wife wanted to leave, but Joy stayed. And that's what irked her nerves. It's like, no, no, no. You didn't say anything. You didn't stand up for us. I was just a prop used for that purposes because you wanted to seem like, oh, we're good Christian folk. And um, you just took that and just like, you know how humiliating that is. Because I would assume most people in that town know that that's her wife. Because you almost have Royal and even Cecilia kind of looking over like, they know what the deal is. Everyone must know what the deal is. But they just kind of, because even the guy was like, oh, okay, let's end that there. So it's like, even he knew that was a little rough. Once again, I think it's a varying thing of some people, relig like, you know, not everyone feels the same way religious wise. You know, you can still be religious and still like, you know, be progressive and like your approach of like, right. Some people don't like homosexuality and other people are like, what's wrong with homosexuality it's beautiful it's it's love is love you know so but for her it's just like right i don't care about the case i don't care about anything joy like what you did was wrong and joy just kind of walks away because she realizes like what right why she did that because she doesn't like this election might not sway her way there's just too many variables and things that like if the longer this investigation goes on the let the more likely she seems inept especially because patricia kind of made that clear like you don't solve this the tillerson family is going to use their might to kind of screw you over because it's like right we kind of have a lot of sway here so and also if she goes after the abbott family which she was told not to because that's going to be a swing and a miss so she's kind of screwed on all fronts because she's just like yeah i'm getting closer and closer to solving this so I didn't talk about it, but I did think it was really interesting that Autumn ended up carving. It's it's the Abbott family symbol, but it's more so the one she saw on the rock. That's basically the Abbott symbol, but it's turned more like an arrow rather than an A. So it's pointing to like, the, it's horizontal. The point of it is horizontal instead of vertical. So she carved that into her skin. Where I'm like, once again, she's not in her right mind. And I didn't talk about the Tillersons, once again, their situation that the power of attorney and stuff like that, everything in the will uh, from Wayne says that it's going to go to Billy, which you have Luke looking like, what the, why? I mean, when was the last time he altered that? Like, has it been Billy for a while? Because that's the most recent will, but it hasn't been like, there's some like no, notations and stuff that have to be done, like like official stuff that hasn't made it like completely binding yet i guess but it's mainly binding but not fully something like that like uh patricia and luke are trying to find a way around it because patricia's like right this is going to be yours billy he's he doesn't he's not the right person for it so don't tell billy about it as long as it because it hasn't technically gone into effect yet because for one wayne's still alive so until he dies like it's still they still got time to change it so she's going to aspen for a while it's like right, we're going to try and figure this out and obviously luke's he's like right your dad in his condition that he's in but you're still pissed because it's like right he didn't listen to you about the trevor thing and trevor's dead you know that the abbots are behind it um uh, specifically you think rhett's behind it but you you don't have any proof but uh now your dad is you find out your dad leaving stuff to billy and you're kind of upset with billy just like being all huggy with you and stuff so red's not red but uh billy uh God, it's literally saying everyone else's name but his. Luke has got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. So, all the while this is happening, uh, you know, like I said, Autumn bringing Billy into the fold. And you're like, okay, so where's this going to go? How's this all going to play out? Uh, like I said, with the ending of this episode, they... Uh, and we, I think the last shot of the episode is a police truck. So, I'm assuming it's Joy. So, I guess it works out for Joy, like, with... Uh, uh, 
Perry giving his full confession, it kind of wins. Once again, a lawyer could still poke holes in it, but he already confessed, so that's damning in its own right. But maybe it's like a good lawyer could potentially get that thrown out, say, like it's inadmissible or something like that. But it's like, I don't know. I'm sure that someone could poke holes in it, but now Amy knows, like, because she was like, wait, what are you going to confess? And so she probably heard the arguments um, they were having. Like, she was there to get the glass, like, slicing over her um, head, but... It's it's definitely going to be interesting to see where the next episodes takes us because uh, uh, episode seven and eight will be the last of the season. Eight will be the season finale, so it's definitely going to be interesting to see how the uh, the last two episodes of the season play out and where all of this ends up taking us. Uh, but really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.